Hi, this is Roy Jamshed, uh, CSCP Lecture 4, Module 1, Book 1, Chapter 1, and Topic 1, Introduction to the Supply Chain. My first request is to all of you who are watching my channel is to subscribe it because, you know, as much as you subscribe me, I will be more motivated to make more lectures for you. Uh, today, we will study about the types of the supply chain management. There are basically two types. One is the vertical integration and one is lateral or horizontal integration. There's an other Japanese con concept in that we will study in detail in the next of the first uh, one is vertical integration. Vertical integration or vertical supply chain management refers to the practice of of bring supply chain inside one organization. Let's look at an example of Henry Ford it's a car manufacturing company it used to have its iron ores from where it takes the raw material then it makes its all components then it has its own plant then even the distribution centers it has its own distribution centers and showrooms so from the top to the bottom from raw material to the showroom everything is managed by the uh, Henry Ford the car manufacturing company but the primary benefit of vertical integration is control. Now you can look at the picture. So all the control you have and all the chain and the supply, inf supply and the demand information you have. So you have a better control in these sort of organizations. But it's very challenging to be fully integrated. Almost now uh, very, very few companies are doing practice like, like this because it's very, very difficult to manage everything because you can be expert in one thing, but you cannot be expert in everything. So when you do like this, it's difficult to manage. Now the second one is the lateral or horizontal supply chain. Look at the exhibit 1-5. Uh, there are different companies in this supply chain model, a different company is extracting the material different companies making the components then plant then distributor and retailer and the customer these are all different companies they're not like same company so uh, as a definition we define the lateral supply chain as an organization specialized in the school competencies and relies on other specialists for the rest of the supply chain lateral supply chain is now the now we come to us the reason for relying on lateral supply chain why this horizontal supply chain is so popular and so successful what's the reason behind it so we discuss it one by one and i try to give you the examples first one is economies of scale and scope look at the scale any company in the world cannot have economies of scale of the components related to that supply chain for example there's a car manufacturing company. It it produces one million, million cars and it requires the air conditioner for the car. So there's another company which only produce the car is air conditioners. So that company is expert in producing the car air conditioners. It produces like 10 million car air conditioners for 10 companies. So in that certain requirement of AC, a car manufacturer need a specialist like a company which is producing the AC air conditioners for car for like 10 companies or 20 companies. So first thing is that you do not have economies of scale in each of the component you are dealing with. So you go for your own core competencies. Um, second one is the scope. You know, you need to have the supply chain partners are specialists to increase the scope of your sales are of are your services. For example, you are a pharmaceutical company based in USA or uh, Europe, and you want to sell those uh, medicines to the Asian countries, and you need a supply chain partner which is which has uh, existence in the local market or maybe you you need a logistic partner which you know can ship your medicine from uh, USA or Europe to the Asia and the warehousing facilities which in which the certain medicines can be 
stored like the cold chain the specific refrigerators or specific things like that where you can store it second point is the to improve the focus and expertise this is very certain very easy point you can say that you you are expert in doing something and rest of the things you leave it to the others so so you expert in producing the refrigerator so you go, don't go further you just focus on that you focus to increase the quality of your refrigerator instead of expanding your logistic company along with that so you need to be focused you have to do the do like that you have come to to your core competencies uh, number third is to leverage the communication and production competencies so number third reason is now there's no issue in the communication yeah? means a company levi's company can have the production plant in india or pakistan so there's no communication gap you can have live conference emails lots of messages what are so ever is available and that's why because of the technology and the connectivity levi's procure uh may have a plot in uh, some other company is managing the production plant of levi's jeans in in asia like bangladesh okay there are some challenges it number one synchronizing the network of independent company is entirely challenging yes it's very challenging task so they are independent company and you have to synchronize them like you have to uh make such a joint collaboration are uh, synchronizing that you know you get the information but it is difficult not easy to do that each company gain in scale scope focus it may see its ability to see and understand the large supply chain process other thing lack in that process uh, the problem is that you know you have to see all the supply chain from base to the end for example if uh somebody is selling uh air conditioner or refrigerators because you know i belongs to the home appliance company so the end seller retailer don't know what's in the production uh in my company what's the quantity of production in my capacity uh, in my company so our company don't have an idea that in germany x y z company is making uh, some components are they available or not available like compressors so you you got this point hope you currently we have studied two uh, models of the supply chain one is vertical and one is horizontal there is an other concept but the main are the two one which i i described above this is one is the japanese concept called kiretsu maybe my pronunciation is not right but the concept here is like if you have are a tire or a vehicle manufacturing company this certain supply chain partners along with you like somebody who provides you the tire somebody who provides you the iron uh somebody who provides you the paint and somebody who provides you the other components like seat uh, air conditioners and other other equipments so the main one has the car manufacturer has the investment in 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 the company which is producing the tire the company which is producing the tires may have the investment in the original car manufacturer so so technically they are and legally they are independent companies but the supply chain partners have their share and that makes the interest of that specific entity so here here the here it works like that hope you understand if you don't get it it's very easy like each one has the share in this in uh, in the supply chain partners car manufacturers may be invested in the person company that is uh producing the pay